Welcome back everybody. So I'm going to keep this kind of short here. We're not really going to go over these parts right now. We're just kind of going to go over them as we put them on. You'll kind of get the gist of the idea. So these pipes here were cut on a bandsaw. These pipes here were cut on a plasma along with these other ones. And then all these end plates were cut on a plasma table. Now the reason I'm not going to really spend much time here is it'll all make sense as we go along. So I'm over at the farm, because that's where the big welder is, and some of this material is half inch thick, so I would like better penetration. And it's just easier to bring everything here, rather than drag that welder home. You know, it's only three miles away. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of get everything laid out, or where we can start with, uh, <clears throat> start with a couple pieces, and go from there. Okay guys, so as I said in the intro there, these pieces were cut both on a plasma table and a pipe plasma for these round pieces. Now the reason for having them cut there, one, it's just a lot easier, it takes less time. Also part fitment, these should all fit up very nicely and it's just cleaner. If you have access to it, great. If not, this can all be done by hand, it's just going to take more time. So this is going to be the bottom burn chamber. Now this will lay down, I have it stood up just for welding this plate on here, just to have gravity in my favor. This plate here, this is my door opening and down here is where the air slot for your door will go. So I need to get that lined up with the bottom ash cleanouts there and we should be able to tack this in. Okay guys, with this tacked on here, we'll just leave that alone for now. I'm going to flip it over. We're gonna grab one of these blanks here for the back side. All right, with this second blank in place, that wraps up the bottom. And you'll kind of see here in a little bit why I'm gonna jump onto the next one. I'm gonna make welding for myself a lot easier. So this one is done for now. We're gonna jump onto this one and there's a lot more to do in this one because this is the heat exchanger as well as the fan. So this cutout here is for the fan. And then these two plates here are for all the tubes for the heat exchangers. All right, with this heat exchanger plate on this tube, we can kind of talk about why I chose to do what I did. And like it, everyone is going to do this a little differently, so it's kind of up to you what you think is going to be best. So these holes are three and a half inches because they're gonna take a three inch schedule 10 pipe. Uh, the reason for schedule 10 instead of a thicker like schedule 40 is it's not gonna take as much to heat it up. Now, I chose to do 14 holes. It's what seemed to lay out nice. So we go two, three, four wide, three, and then two. Now, when your heat comes up from the bottom here, it's gonna have to go around this tube around this tube around and it's got to work its way around all of these different tubes in order to get out of the top as well as travel the length of the tubes so i think this should work out pretty well but we're going to find out uh i'm not an expert on this by any means it's just what i've seen and what i kind of came up with that i thought would work good 
Uh, one thing to <clears throat> kind of cover, this is a 20 inch schedule 40 pipe. So this was all scrap materials, kind of using what I have. I was just able to get everything plasma cut out and try to make something out of it so that we have heat this year. Before I tack this one in place, I wanted to make sure that my rotation was right so my, all my holes line up once we stack these two together. So what I did is I marked square between these holes and then I found center of these and ran a straight line up and marked that. And it actually, both times, the lead in from the plasma, there's just a little bit of a notch there. That little lead in on both the pipe and the plate actually lined up well. So I just wanted to double check that, make sure that I'm not getting too far ahead of myself and get everything out of square. Okay, with that one tacked in, we're gonna switch over to this bottom one. And this one's gonna be a little different and I'll show you why once we get this flipped over. Well, it took a little bit of messing around with some different size blocks here, but this is going to live inside of here. Now, the reason for that is we have this other plate here and that's where the fan mounts up to. It's just a squirrel cage fan out of an old furnace. That is gonna mount on that plate and that plate will rest on top of here. What that's gonna do is charge this chamber with air and force air through most of these tubes, hopefully all of them. Now, there's another one here. We'll get to that one later. With the first tube set here, you notice I left it down just a little bit. Initially, when I would first kind of planned this out, I was gonna have them stick up about a quarter inch proud of this plate here. And the reason I changed that is with this weld right here. With this sticking up that high, I didn't like how I would have a double weld there or one really fat weld. Just really wasn't a fan of that. I'd rather be able to weld all of these or at least tack all these in than weld this separately. If they touch, no big deal. I just didn't want a monster bead going through there. Kind of personal preference, probably wouldn't hurt anything, but that's just how I chose to do it. So that's gonna leave the pipe a little long on the other end. Not a big deal. It's not gonna affect anything. Literally, it's just warm air coming out of that. So I think we'll be just fine. I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna tack these in. And after doing this first one, they are quite a snug fit. I think I'm actually gonna start at the bottom here and work my way up at the top. That way I can use both of those holes to my advantage to try and fish them through into the next plate at the bottom there. Okay, so I moved you guys around here. Like I said, I want to start on these bottom ones and work my way up. So we'll see how well this goes. The last one was a little bit of a fight. And of course, because it's on camera, it works beautifully. Hopefully the rest go that way. I don't think I need to keep showing you guys the same process 14 times. So I'll bring you back once I get all these tacked in. All right, there they are. I know camera angle isn't the best here, but just to keep you guys on the tripod, it's unfortunately not tall enough to see up and over this. All 14 of them are in there. They're just tacked in there. I'm gonna go ahead and start burning them in. So we're gonna do a little bit of jumping around here. I'm having some issues welding around those 14 pipes in the heat exchanger. Uh, I want to try it over here on these roller stands. I have the bottom up here now, and I already welded this one end cap. That was when I was having a uh, little bit of trouble dialing in the welder. That's good to go now, but we still need to weld the other end cap and then put the bottom on this as well as the legs, or I should say the ash clean out on this side. So let's go ahead and get that back part welded and get this bottom piece put on this ash clean out and we'll get the legs put on it and then this can come down permanently and we'll get that other one back up there. 
Okay, so that's welded front and back. We are gonna go grab the ash clean out. That's going to get welded right along here. And it's just a couple pieces of angle iron that's already been welded together. Hopefully it'll make sense kinda once we get that set on there. And through the power of editing, we have a installed ashtray or ash clean out. Up next, we're going to put the legs on. Now, I'm having a little bit of trouble doing this the way that we cut these. They were profiled out to fit this 20 inch pipe, but they're 16 inch spacing. So I'm kind of using a level and eyeballing it and a tape measure all kind of as one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack all four of them together or tack all four of them. And then once all four are on the piece here, I will then be able to square everything and make sure that I'm good before I finish weld everything in. So it's kind of hard to juggle both the tape measure level and a camera. So I'm just going to do this off camera quick. We'll get everything squared up and I'll bring you back. Well, I did end up going and cutting those front two legs back off that I had tacked on there. I didn't level the barrel or the door here. I went off the uh, ash clean out and that was not perfectly level with the door. Um, it's just a hair off. You'll never notice it on the ash clean out, that's fine. But on the door, I wanted that level just for aesthetics. So all the legs are leveled with each other. They all measure 16 between each leg. And then we're 36 inches lengthwise between the two sets of legs. So I'm going to go ahead here and get them burned in. I'm gonna go ahead and save you guys the trouble of watching me do three more legs here. Uh, I will get the very top of that as well. I'm gonna roll it a little bit so it's a little easier to get to. But I'll make my way around all four of them, then come back and do that as I roll it from side to side. And then this is ready to leave and we can bring the heat exchanger in. There it is. That is the finished burn chamber. Hopefully now these pieces and parts are starting to make a little bit more sense. Have a look inside here. As I said before, this here is your damper for your air intake. This here will be your clean out. 
inside there you can see the four cleanouts there will be a grate that lays above them holes and then there's the hole in the back and that goes straight up to let your smoke and all that out well I keep changing my mind on how I want to go about building this and I think I'm just gonna do it chronologically from the ground up so I'm gonna just hold off on that heat exchanger just a little bit longer and we're gonna jump into these separation pipes or up pipes or whatever you'd like to call them and I may have some of you confused with this extra pipe that's bisecting these pipes here and the reason is when the smoke in your heat first comes out I feel like you lose a lot of that heat more or less in the heat exchanger it, it this is just another way to try and scavenge some of that before it even gets to the heat exchanger maybe slow that draft down just a little bit we'll see if it works i'm not a hundred percent sold on this idea but we're going to try it and this is what that extra hole is for in the heat exchanger so if we go over here you guys remember there's this hole here so when that fan is blowing air down through these tubes it's also going to blow air down here there will be a 90 right here and that will run right alongside this pipe here so that we'll have to cut this off and that 90 will come right up into here so this is just another heat tube now I did go with a schedule 40 pipe on this only because it's going to see a lot more heat in this area here this pipe here is a dummy it is just here to partially hold this pipe and to hold the top heat exchanger so I have everything squared up kind of where it should be if you look down here we are lined up with that hole you can get a light down in there so you guys can see what's going on we're lined up there lined up over here and as I said that's a dummy so it doesn't matter I just made sure that this pipe is in the center of that door that should align this one to that back one with those welded on I brought this over set it on the stands with the forklift let me tell you there is some weight in there I'm gonna go ahead and use these roller stands since I can turn this pipe and I can just weld the bottom halves and not have to weld upside down it's just a simplicity thing I mean make life easier for yourself right up top here we have a hole here and a hole here now this is the exhaust pipe this is just a clean out because these tubes will get dirty over time so this way down the road when I need to I can open up this clean out and we can either pressure wash it out or do something you know of that nature steam it something and that is right above this back hole so all of that would then run down into that chamber and can go out the ash clean out
Well, as with all projects, I am running into a little bit of an issue here. So I can get a decent bead, you know, obviously where it's open and accessible. The problem is these pipes are just too long. And right there you can see on both sides of there, I can't get the nozzle down in there far enough or the correct angle. So I'm starting to really kind of make a, a pool that starts to drip. And I don't really like how that's turning out because I'm not getting a very good penetration that way. So I think the best route here is going to be to cut these pipes shorter. Now, I have access to a plasma cutter. I don't have it here, though. So my solution for now is I'm just going to leave these alone. Leave the ones I haven't welded yet. Leave the ones I have. Don't touch anything. I'll get that plasma and I'll come in here and I'll cut these all down to about a half inch tall or however far that nozzle protrudes out. So I went ahead and cut this short pup piece here, tacked my 90 onto that longer four inch schedule 40 as well as tacked the pup piece on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that uh, heat exchanger and I am going to bring that over here and we are going to set this where it needs to be Reason is I want to cut this pipe off flush with the end and I don't want to really screw it up it would be just easier to set everything in place and see what hits where I, I Believe I have the measurements right, but let's just verify Well, my measurements were good but I need to open this up a little bit. If you look, we're hitting just on the top side there and just on the bottom side here. That plasma cut hole wasn't quite perfect. That's all right. And if I move my gloves here. You guys can get the first visual of what we're going after here. So obviously, as we've discussed before, all heat exchanger tubes as well as this one, this will get cut off even with the rest of them. And that one, fire burns here, that's a dummy. So it goes up this one here, into here, and out, and then out of that hole, out. As far as air goes, air will be in this back chamber here. It can go through all of them tubes in there as well as some will get pushed through this bottom pipe that will start scavenging heat early, especially when we first start this thing up and all the heat hasn't made its way up into here yet. Hopefully this, once this bottom pipe gets warm, we can kick the fan on and we'll get a little heat a little quicker. Like I said, I don't know if that's 100%, but we're going to try it. Well, with everything squared up, I think we can go ahead and burn most of this in. Well, with all of that welded, all that leaves is the back plate for the fan and <clears throat> the top clean out here. Like I said, the exhaust will tie in when we actually put this where it's supposed to be. So let's keep working at it. It's, uh, it's already past late, so might as well just keep going at this point and just get it done. So I'm going to grab that plate and a level and we'll get that set on there. Well, there it is tacked into place. I'm going to go ahead and burn it in. I don't know how much more welding you guys can watch, but I got that ring to do. And like I said, that clean out. And then we are going to take this outside and light it on fire. Well, there it is. I got the clean out on. We're still waiting to put the blower fan on until after we do the initial burnout of this. A few other things that need to be done. Obviously, exhaust needs to get welded on yet. 
We need to fix this, which I will do before it leaves here. We're good on there, on that port. We need to install the door, and I have a stainless steel tray that will slide in for that ash clean out, and we need to put the grates in. But we're going to take it outside here and just see if we can make a fire. Well, there it is. I think that was a successful burn-in. I'm going to let this just continue burning. I want to thank everyone for watching, for following along, subscribing, hitting the like button. We'll see you on the next one.